it'll catch up when it catch up. So we gonna say welcome to God's anointed hands. Two o'clock service in Mississippi. Three o'clock service on the East Coast. We had two messages this morning, strong and powerful and telling the truth. And hopefully the Lord will allow us to continue. Um, I hope that we say some things that will affect your life and make you look at your life a little differently in the way that he would have you look at it instead of the way that we look at it ourselves because you know we are we are not mistakes or we never find fault in ourselves. So with that I'll ask uh, Brother Tim, would you pray us in? Stevens, can you give us a, a few verses or something? Thank you for the prayer and the song um, this afternoon. We needed both, and you both came through, so it is very much appreciated. Today's um, sermon is going to be a little different, um, but hopefully it comes to you and you understand what's coming to you. And I'm always asking a question, why do we continue to have a problem listening to the Lord. We can't seem to get love together. We sure don't have a problem killing. We can hate as easily as we breathe. And a color makes man's heart turn to a reckless and ignorant vessel for the devil to be viewed. And when do we turn into these vessels for the Lord to be viewed? We struggle with the fact that man is and does not respect the Lord's authority as we should. Or maybe we aren't in a true understanding of the true doctrine of the Lord. Today's word comes from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 25 through 27. And it reads as follows. <clears throat> And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, 
he came out of him. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For what the authority commanded he even the unclean spirits? And they do obey him. I want to title this message today, Are We Dumber Than the Demons? And I'll answer it right away. The answer is yes. See, Jesus has authority and power over us. And he tells us what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. But we are men and we like to do things when we want to and how we want to. The fact stands strong in this passage because Jesus starts off rebuking the demon and told him to be quiet and come out. Now remember, Jesus is talking to an unclean spirit, one that does not worship him. He believes in him, but he does not worship him. But this unclean spirit understands the powers and the authority of Jesus Christ. And he submits to the Lord's will. The demon did not and does not serve the Lord. But he understood the power of Jesus and just his word. Jesus did not reach out and touch the demon. He didn't touch the demon at all. And all he did was tell the demon what to do. Come when is the last time that the Lord told you what to do and you didn't listen? I know you may think that you don't have these conversations with the Lord. I know you may think that the Lord doesn't talk to you. But the fact that the word is still available to you, that you have the ability now to even listen to it if you can't read, if you can't see. The Lord is still having these conversations with unclean spirits. And let, let me give you a few conversations that the Lord may have given to you. If you look at 1 Peter, the third chapter, the eighth through the ninth verse, it says, finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. See, here is a conversation that he had with you, and I'm sure that he rebuked us when we had the conversation because he stated the same thing with Peter. Get behind me, Satan. Yes, sir. Now, if you look at this, the demon would have listened, but the believers that we are, do we listen to the conversation from the Lord? See, the Lord said, be of a like mind and our minds can't stay focused on the Lord because our fleshly senses keep winning the battle. Y'all probably heard something like, can you stop and pray for an hour while I go talk to the Father? Again, can you stop and pray for an hour while I go talk to the Father? But that demon... Knowing who Jesus is would have been praying until Christ came back. I, I have to ask you, are we dumber than the demon? How many times have you repaid evil with evil? And please be aware that pettiness and a little bit of getting back at somebody is still evil. Did you have to go to the ways of your father with the lowercase f here on earth? Because even though that demon serves the father of lies, he knew who has the true authority and he would not pay evil for evil because 
the Lord commanded him not to. Maybe this is an insult to you and you are sitting there like they did this to, they did this to me and they aren't going to get over on me. Hmm. And if that's you, then you are dumber than the demon. Even in the passage here, whether the demon listened to Jesus, Jesus tells the believer what they should truly do, and that is to be like him. If he repaid our evil with a blessing, which he did, then why are the believers not repaying evil with a blessing? Because once again, if he commanded the demons to do so, they would. You got proof right here. I know some of you are under that veil or that big top coat where you say, he gives us a choice. And he does. And the demon had a choice. And it could have said no, like a lot of us do. Or he could do as he was told and he did. Maybe he truly understood and understands the authority in the word of God. He may not serve God, but he knows who truly has the power. See, if you look in Matthew 22, 36 through 40, and y'all notice, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. This is a conversation, in case you're wondering. Just like he had with this demon that he has with you. So here is another conversation that the Lord has had with him. As, as stated, the demon, if commanded to do so, he would have done it. But the followers, the disciples, the one that confessed to be the ones who love him, who he went to the cross for, can't complete either task here. And this is a command to us. We can't love our brothers and sisters, so we fail the second greatest. And if we fail the second, then we are disobedient to the first. Because in order to truly love the Lord with everything that is in us, we have to be obedient. The fact that we claim to know Jesus and love Jesus should have had us tripping up just like the demon. Jesus spoke and his word stopped us in our tracks. I guess the question is, can you hear his word? Another question may be, or do you know his word? Because obviously this demon did. The demon stopped. He didn't have conversation. He was silenced. Every command Jesus said, the demon followed. Maybe we should know the word better. Because the word sure did stop the demon. And it stopped Satan. Remember in the wilderness, it stopped him in his tracks. So, this vessel of sin and iniquity acknowledged that there is one greater than he is. Get your mirrors out because did that vessel of sin and iniquity that is looking at you see and know that there is one far greater than you? I know when I see myself and I look at myself, I see how far I've come from how I looked as a young man to as much as I look as an older man. But I do see improvements on my spirit where my flesh is slowly going away. Are you looking at yourself that way? Are you trying to compare your yesterday to today? Do you know that there is one out there that is far greater than us? If you don't, I can tell you the only perfect vessel that went to the cross that can only atone for your sins is 
that vessel. If you know that and you believe that, then why do you pay less attention to the word of the Lord than a demon does? The truth of the matter is that even a demon, when commanded by the Lord, knows to do as the Lord says to do. And if that is true, then why does a disciple of the Lord, when commanded by the Lord, not do what the Lord says to do? See, this demon that was supposedly in control found out that he is not in control. And he knew that. And when the word of God was spoken to him, he really knew it. What about you? Have you let the true word of God take you over and know that you are not in control? And when God's word is spoken to you, do you truly know that you are not in control unless you want to resist the word? And, and I would ask again, are we dumber than the demons? See, the demon understood the authority of God and are we missing the mark on understanding the authority and reverence of God? We, we let the world claim to have this and that, and the world has created this and that, and the world has done these great things, but the world has done nothing because it owns nothing. See, has the world put a smoke screen on a man that he thinks that the word of God has no authority? Because I think a lot of us do. Look at this verse here in Matthew 28, 19, and 20. And y'all know this one too. This is another conversation. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Uh oh, you you wondering about your conversation with the Lord. You y'all keep waiting on the Lord, but the Bible, the word that He left, is the conversation that the Lord has already set up for you. If you are still waiting for people to come to a building to tell them about God, or if we are only trusted in a phone line to tell them about God, then we are not paying attention to His authority. The church is the people. And you can even tell here that the demon did not attack a building. He attacked a person. Are, are, are we dumber than the demons? I, I got to keep asking myself because we are told to baptize. And how do you baptize when you ain't with them? When you don't come together, then how do we baptize? The demon went out for what it was after. Are we dumber than the demons because we ain't going out for what we supposed to be after? We were told to teach what we have been taught and the demon knew the word and when he was told what to do, he did it. Are we dumber than the demons? The ironic thing is the demon knows his outcome. This demon ain't got nothing but condemnation. And the Lord died for your outcome and mine, and we still move away from the Lord. I got to say it again. Are we dumber than the demons? Sitting still is not what a disciple does for the father. And sitting still is not what the demons are doing for their father. But one thing the demons seem to know better than we do is when Jesus speaks, they can't forsake him. And they know that his word is the final answer. Do we understand that when Jesus speaks that we should never forsake him? I know this flesh burdens you. I know this flesh is a struggle. But I guess I should also ask, are you even trying to fight? Are you even calling on them? See, why does it seem that the ones that have the opportunity for an inheritance of the kingdom are the ones that forsake the Lord the most? The animal
animals listen to the Lord, so I guess I could ask, are we dumber than the animals? The stars listen to the Lord, so I guess I can ask, are we dumber than the stars? The plants, the water, the mountains, and everything else listen to the Lord. So what about us? Even the ones who left heaven with the great serpent when confronted by the Lord, listen to the Lord. And none of them have the inheritance or the availability to the inheritance that we have. And I have to ask you, are we dumber than the demons? See, this, this demon tells you something that will slap your pride in the face also. And that is that everybody submits and will submit to the Lord by acknowledging who he is. You can learn a lesson if you don't know who the Lord is here because even the demon acknowledges who he is. Have you taken the time in your daily life to acknowledge who the Lord is? Because this demon did because in his day of attacking the flesh, Jesus stepped to the sin that he is and sin had to go. Have you let Jesus step to your sin or did you say that I can handle it on my own because if you think that he can't remove your burdens, then you might be dumber than the demons. See, this is when the demon was torn out and the Lord can tear out your sins if you understand his authority and what he came here for. We should be amazed with the revealing of the word of God to us. And just like it had an effect on this demon that knew who was speaking to him, and you see the strength of the word, then why aren't we doing as the Lord commands? Love someone. Worship me in spirit and truth. Be on one accord. Study the word. Show some compassion. Repent. Persevere. Have some faith. You keep having these conversations with the Lord. And just like he stopped and spoke to this demon, he stopped and talked to you. He continues to stop and talk to us. Are you amazed at the authority and the doctrine because you don't know of his authority and doctrine? Because if you don't know him, then this is the right time to get to know him. And if you say that you know him and you are amazed then. Are you truly trying to know him and understand his authority? Even as the demon did. The demon did exactly what he said. I know that you want to say that he doesn't talk to me like he used to, but read the Bible because that is your constant conversation with the Lord. Pray to him because that is your constant conversation to the Lord. That is your constant conversation with the Lord. And then listen to what he has said to you. He done told you, repent, believe, have faith, persevere, endure, work the field, and let my people know who I am. Or are we dumber than the demons? And we don't acknowledge his conversation because this passage and this message truly has nothing to do with the demon. But truly has everything to do with the authority and power in Christ Jesus. The demon is the vessel that lets you know that Satan has no authority because at this time, the demon went off the clock for the devil and went to work in fear and obedience unto the Lord. And all will see this one day so... Why are we dumber than the demons today when we don't have to be? We have an opportunity to share the word. We have an opportunity to get the word. We have an opportunity to come together faster and quicker than any other generation in the world that has ever been. And we spend more time staying away from each other, not liking each other, hating each other. If you think about back in the day when they were walking with camels and mules and donkeys, they would walk miles and miles and come upon one another. 
and address one another. We can't walk in a grocery store and look up and say hello. I just got to ask you, are we dumber than the demons? Turn to the Lord and realize that the true king, the true power and authority is in the one and is the one that this demon acknowledged in reverence and fear. Understand. That we don't need to be dumber than the demon. We know who Christ Jesus is. Are we not willing to man up, woman up, child up, and hear the conversation of the Lord? Are we not willing to understand that even a demon knows who he is? And if a demon knows and it is a spiritual being, and the Lord has told us who he is and showed us who he is and continues to show us who he is. Then why aren't we doing better than the demons? Why are we still hating one another? Why is the skin color tearing us apart? Why do we have all these segregations and separations in the church? Why do we have them in our communities? Why do we have them in the world? Why ain't we showing more love than we show hatred? Why aren't we calling on one another, helping one another? How can there be hunger in a world with abundance? Maybe because we ain't smarter than the demons. Maybe we ain't understanding that the Lord gave enough for everybody if we would just share in love and kindness with one another. Sometimes you have to sit back and look at the great power of God and understand that that demon wasn't that dumb. That demon said, I know who you are. That demon said, I may not serve you, but I will acknowledge you and understand your authority and reverence, and I will be obedient to what you say. Because even though I left heaven with that great serpent, I know who was in charge when I was up there. Sometimes we need to step back and understand who's truly in charge and give him the true reverence that he deserves. Because if not, are we dumber than a demon? Amen. Amen. Great word, Pastor Lyle. Good job. Every bit of it, bro. Good job. Be the glory. Are we dumber than a demon? <laughs> Great word. Floor is open. Sister McDonald, was you on here? I thought I heard you. message here, and I hope it came through clear, is everybody is going to acknowledge Christ one day. One day. That demon's one day was when Christ talked to him. Are you going to acknowledge him while he's talking to you, or are you going to wait for him to have to talk to you? You don't want to get up there and start confessing and ain't got nothing but bad confessions, because I can tell you, Satan ain't going to be on your right or left saying, well, that one belongs to me. That's not his. 
-hmm. It's going to be your own. And why you can breathe and talk and lift him up and do his work and hear the conversation that he's saying, talk to him. Yeah. Understand that reverence and authority. And as much as this demon was here doing his bad thing, he understood everything. He didn't have no control. He didn't have no power. He had no authority. He started thinking that way he did. But he, he rebuked him and he said, hold still. Do you hold still for the Lord and let him come to you? Because if you let him come to you, he'll come through you. And then when he in you, he'll come out you. He, he, he can't come out you if he ain't in you. Are you are you gonna give him a chance to come to you? He already done done everything you need. He done giving you everything you need, everything you have. What you gonna give back to him? He deserves more than we ever can give him. It has never been about the receiver. It's always been about the giver. And when do we acknowledge him like we should? We keep letting the world dictate to us. The world ain't stopped for nothing that it likes to do. So why are we stopping for what the Lord wants us to do? He told us ain't no weapon going to do nothing to you. They coming, but they can't prosper. He done told you I'll be with you always. I will be your light in the darkness. I gave you armor, clove yours. He done told us everything to do to get out there and do as he has commanded. Are we afraid of his conversation? Or do we not like his conversation? Just food for thought. Amen. 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 Uh, don't forget, we have a 6 o'clock evening service. Um, who is that preaching again, Brother Tim? Um, Minister Lori Lynn. I always say her name wrong. I say Minister Lori preaching. She gave a good message the last time, I must say. Um, so, please, if you can be there, be there 6 o'clock uh Y'all time, 7 o'clock up in the Atlanta and Northeast side time. Um, also understand that we got to start hearing God. Yeah. And then we got to start doing as God tells us to. Even this demon heard God. And then he did as he was instructed. And that's, that's the true message here. It ain't about the demon because... We all got our own sins in us, our own demons in us. But when God talks to you and says, do it, recognize and do it. That is what we're here for. We're here to serve. That means we do things. We don't worry about how much it costs. We don't worry about how much work it is. We just do. And serve. that same thing happened with this demon. And if he can talk to a demon who don't love him and we confess to we better get on our good foot. Sister McDonald, you want to pray us out? Yes. Thank you. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come today again to say thank you, Lord. We thanking you for another day's journey. Father God, we thanking you for the message that we heard on today. Father God, we ask you for the message thanking you for the message that we hear this evening. Father God, we know that we can never get enough praising you. So, Father God, we want to continue to praise you. I want to thank you for the men of God, Lord. Thank you in a mighty way. Father God, I'm thanking you right now for the sick, the shitty, and the people that are this who might not feel well right now, Lord. But we thank you just for coming on and listening and hearing the word. Let us be doers of the word of God. Thank yes. you, Lord. And Father God, right now, I'm asking you, as we move on and leave this service right here and come back on again at 6 o'clock, Father God, we are still willing and being able to praise your name yes. and praise the woman of God who's about to preach your word for tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Don't forget about the evening service. God bless. Be smarter than the demon.